So good afternoon. I'm joined here by uh, my colleague Petra Gov-Alachova, who's a physiotherapist and an expert in physical activity. And uh, we will start the interview with my first question. So what would be your recommendations for the effective management of uh, young patients with obesity or excess weight uh, or eating disorders? What are the benefits uh, of physical activity in these groups? Well, um, hello, everybody. Uh, that's a very broad question uh, because, uh, as you already know, the obesity is on one end of the spectrum and the eating disorders uh, that would be considered as anorexia, bulimia, or other eating disorders are on the other uh, end of the weight spectrum. So the question is really broad in how to effectively use the physical therapy in uh, this sense. Uh, some would say that you should be very careful with physical activity. Some even say not to do any physical activity if there is a prolapse. But in the, my point of view and my uh, experience, physical activity should be a key um, ingredient and therapy of any kind of uh, eating disorder or obesity because the benefits that physical activity brings to the body are enormous. Uh, physical activity uh, encourages our brain to produce uh, certain hormones, enzymes, and create uh, the balance in the body. And uh, Due to that, we really need to uh, consider physical activity as a part of the treatment of a patient, either with uh, obesity or with uh, low weight problems. Uh, so the benefits are definitely higher, but we have to be very careful not to overdo it in certain cases. Okay, so uh, in overweight teenagers or even those who are obese, uh, how can they implement exercise in their life? So with the obese uh, children, they're not children anymore, but uh, with the overweight, uh, we have to implement uh, the exercise to increase the active muscle mass and decrease the fat. Uh, so in, in that sense, uh, we also not to. Uh, exchange it, but we also have to change the ANS, the autonomous nervous system uh, setting that that would create the pattern for the body to burn the fat, to create more muscle mass, and to redistribute it. So in order to change the metabolism, we have to, uh, we don't have to, but it is very beneficial to uh, readjust the autonomous nervous system. The question is how to do it, right? Uh, so uh, in order to do that, uh, the easiest thing to do is the breathing. All of us breathe. And uh, it's been known for centuries uh, that breathing can affect the autonomous nervous system. And through simple breathing exercises, we can start up the process of readjustment of autonomous nervous system. Uh, talking about breathing, uh, all of us breathe. We do since the very first moment that we are born. The problem is uh, with obesity, uh, the diaphragm uh, starts to be a little bit higher and is dysfunctional. So through that, we actually decrease the blood flow because it has an opening for all the veins. And then we are lacking, um, I would say, the balance in the sympathetic activity and parasympathetic activity. So um, it's very good if uh, overweight and obese uh, teenagers, young adults, even children or older people start with breathing exercises that are supervised, that they learn how to use their diaphragm, how to use the entire spectrum of the breath, and thus it 
has an effect on the brain in order to release hormones, to release enzymes. And as we know, the happy hormones uh, created by uh, physical activity are released by our brain. So uh, in that sense, that's a perfect start to uh, getting the weight under control to reassessing the autonomous nervous system. And then after we have this under control, we can implement more movement, but on the benefits of the readjustment of autonomous nervous system. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. I, I would actually jump into that. I know we all breathe, right? But how to do it properly? Uh, in many yoga classes, uh, the instructors are very capable of teaching the proper way of breathing. Uh, most of the physical therapists should be educated enough to teach even the yoga instructors what is the proper position for breathing, what is the proper posture and movements and the location of the body when we do those first uh, breathing exercises in order to use the entire capacity and in order to readjust the ANS. Mm -hmm. Okay, that uh, sounds promising that we'll start just with breathing exercise. Excellent. Uh, just uh, my question connected with it, uh, you mentioned that uh, supervision uh, is important. Uh, there are so many different... Uh, websites and mobile apps that that uh sort of offer uh an effective way to to increase muscle mass to lose weight uh are these reliable in your opinion or is it better to always consult a specialist um great question uh i hear that every day and all my patients come is this app okay and i say well if you are supervised at the very beginning and you learn how to do those things, the app is perfect because it guides through. But the very beginning, if we're starting from the point zero and we have no knowledge of our body, our breathing, even our health condition fully, it is advisable, highly, highly advisable for the beginners to seek professional who will teach them how to do it, how to know the own body, the own feeling, what is good for the body. And then we can use the apps or uh, uh, YouTube videos or any kind of guidelines. The, the crucial point is we need someone to, to teach us how to perceive our own body. And with the overweight people uh, and even the underweight people, the body image and the body um, sense is definitely affected. Okay. Uh, are there any risk factors we should consider? Any counterindications to uh, this kind of exercise? Oh, you mean for the obese people and overweight? Yes. Yes, definitely. Uh, the high risk factor uh, is uh, with obesity. It's not just the movement system that is affected. It's the metabolism, it's the endocrine system, it's the cardiovascular system. So we cannot overdo it with the exercise. Uh, there is a Zotova scale of fatigue that uh, we can easily tell when it's too much. But that's only for the cardiovascular fitness that actually affects the movement system. The other things are... Uh, too much weight on joints. So starting with the strength training when the load on the joints is too much and even increasing it is not exactly the right thing. Um, so there are the basic contraindications to every exercise. We have to follow those. But with obese people, I already mentioned yoga. So these days, yoga is a big word everybody does yoga everybody uses it and recommends it but with uh, obese people obesity is uh, very often connected with hypermobility and uh, 
if the instructor is not um, educated enough that the obese people have a greater range of motion in the joints, if they have less stability in the joints, it can be harmful to the people. So increasing the range of motion in obese people is um, very questionable. We do not want to increase the range of motion in joints in these people. We want to stabilize. So it's very important to know where the limits are and how to stabilize the joints for obese people. So taking certain parts of yoga, starting with the breathing exercises, walking is absolutely perfect because we walk everywhere. We are used to carrying our load. So the joints will not be that damaged by it. So starting with uh, walking exercises uh, is absolutely perfect. Okay, and how does it uh, work with uh, patients on the other side of the weight spectrum? Those who oh. are underweight or critically underweight? There is, uh, there's one thing that I haven't said before and is the interdisciplinarity of the team that has to assess these patients. Uh, with uh, the low weight problem, it's even more crucial because that carries the risk of uh, multiple org organs dysfunctions. With the low, uh, low weight, uh, it's very often connected with uh, excessive exercise. These people exercise too much because their body image is damaged. So here, if we come with the movement therapy for this part of the spectrum, uh, we need to be very careful and aware of the fact that that dependence on the exercise is over the edge. So having the exercise under control, they have to move. Because in order to keep the bones healthy, the muscles healthy, um, even the autonomous nervous system variability in a proper condition, we have to be very careful that the movement is appropriate for uh, people. So uh, some sources say that when there is a prolapse in the anorexia, for example, or bulimia, they should... Uh, not do any exercise. Uh, I do not share that opinion totally uh, because the muscles need to move. The joints have to feel the load. Uh, we need to create some kind of enzymatic reactions going, but we need to be very moderate in it and we cannot let it go over the edge. So, uh, especially if they have a prolapse, uh, there can be withdrawal syndromes from the lack of physical activity. And that even makes the whole condition worse. So, the controlled and highly monitored physical activity is uh, crucial for these patients. So, yes, they need to exercise, they need to do some physical activity, but and here again, um, it is even suggestible. We need to start with the breathing exercises. Okay. Yes. So we're uh, back with breathing. Okay. All right. So, unfortunately, we are back with breathing because that's something that uh, even on the lower spectrum, we have affected. Uh, there is a very low variability of heart rates in these patients. And uh, the autonomous nervous system is not working properly. That's what's happening in the body. And in order to start to change the entire ecosystem of the body, we need to readjust it. And because the breathing is something we do all the time, it's the first step in order to start the processes work better. So again, the same way as on the other side of the spectrum with the overweight people, with the underweight people, we need to lower the sympathetics. We need to increase the variability and the sympathetic balance 
And the breathing exercises are a very simple way for doing it. And again, if we gain that the proper variability between the synthetics and the parasympathetics, we can get the body going in the right direction. And then with the slow exercise, we already have the perfect ground for the movement therapy that will be beneficial for the patient. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for uh, your opinions. It's been uh, very inspirational and it's something that uh, I would say uh, you don't hear very often. So uh, thank you so much. Uh, it's uh, been a pleasure and uh, thank you. Have a nice day. You too. It was a pleasure. Bye-bye.